A um, couple of people have sent me questions about pentatonic scales. Okay, uh, so in this vid I'm going to talk about pentatonics, what they are, why they're useful to you as an improvising pianist, and I'm also going to talk about, um, or, or give you an example of an improvisation exercise you can use that, that has pentatonics in it. Okay, so to get started, what is a pentatonic scale? Let's imagine that we are in the key of C major. Now, if you have piano lessons, you will know the C major scale, because it's one of the first ones you learn. C major has, like all major scales, seven unique notes, and if you play the full scale, it's eight. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B are the unique notes, and then back up, back up to um, C for the eight note scale. Pentatonic scale, as the name kind of implies, think of pentagons and pentagrams and things, has only five unique notes. Okay, and in the major they are the tonic, second, third, fifth, and sixth of the major scale. And back up to the tonic. Okay, one, two, three, five, six, one. Pentatonic has a very sort of distinctive sound. Let's look at it in another major key. Let's go into E flat major, scale of E flat major. It looks like that. The pentatonic is tonic, second, third, fifth, sixth. Back up to the tonic. Okay, there we go. And in starting on any note in any major key, it's always one, two, three, five, six, one. Two, three, five, six, one. Okay, so you can work it out in any particular key that you want to. Minor pentatonic is slightly different. Let's imagine we're in A minor and we base our pentatonic in A minor on the notes of the minor harmonic scale. If you've had piano lessons, you might have learned the melodic scale, which sharpens a seventh, but we're thinking of the minor harmonic scale. A minor pentatonic uses the tonic, third, fourth, fifth, seventh. You'll notice that it's actually the same notes as the C major pentatonic in a different order. That's because if you know a bit of music theory you'll know that A minor is the relative minor of C major. I'm not going to dig into that now. Okay, so major pentatonics one, two, three, five, six, one. Minor pentatonics. One, three, four, five, seven, one. Okay. It's quite easy to pick out in any key, even if you're not good at working out what the scales are of a particular key, because it's got that very distinctive sound. And that's what makes pentatonic special. Okay. There is something very deeply rooted about the pentatonic scale, both major and minor, um, that is very innate and instinctive for human beings everywhere. If you think about sort of major and minor scales, the ones that our piano teachers teach us how to play, they are very much rooted and very much a product of the Western European musical tradition. Okay, so whether it's sort of a C major or F melodic minor or whatever, those are very much part of Western music. Pentatonic scales, whether major or minor, are common to just about every musical culture on earth. So whether it's Javanese gamelan or Chinese music, pentatonics crop up absolutely everywhere. Okay, so why is that useful? That's useful because pentatonics are so innate and so distinctive for their particular key that when you are improvising, starting to improvise on a pentatonic scale is always um, is always safe ground, if you like. So let's imagine you're improvising in F. And you're not sure where to go next, or where do I go now? The next chord is B flat minor. What I'm going to play on the right. If you jump onto the pentatonic, Oh, 
always going to work, okay, every time. That's because the pentatonic is so closely linked to that key, to that tonic note, so, so absolutely close to it, that in your listener's mind it will sound natural, okay, it will sound like it works. And that's even the case, as you can see there, I was playing in the key of F major, but I was playing chords that weren't naturally occurring in the key of F major, like for example E7, but the pentatonic was still working, okay, because the, re the listener's mind is kind of saying F, F major, F major, I'm in F major, therefore if we hear F major pentatonic, that feels like home, as it were. Okay, it's a very difficult thing to describe in words, but when you listen to it, um, it, it all suddenly makes sense, okay? Okay, so the improvisation exercise I'm going to show you is in the key of F major, it's using the chord sequence I've just played, which is the chord sequence uh, from the verse section of George On My Mind, the very famous Ho Hoagy Carmichael song um, that was made, um, made famous by Ray Charles. I'll take you through the chord sequence in a second. And we're going to improvise on it using the F major pentatonic in the right. Okay, so that is one, two, three, five, six, one. F, G, A, C, D, F. If you're not familiar with the basics of how to work up a, a single note improvisation, check my videos on starting to play with blues piano because that takes you through the whole method for starting to do it. Basically, if you're not confident, start with just one note of the pentatonic scale, ideally the tonic, then use two, then use three, then use four, five, and so on. Um, one, and I've made this point repeatedly, one of the easiest ways to start improvising is to um, use a limited number of notes. So you have to worry about what really what you're doing. You've only got a sort of five notes to choose from. You know, you might go across the octaves, but there's a limited number of notes. And, and this makes the pentatonic ideal for improvisation practice. Because it always sounds great and you don't have many notes to worry about. Okay, so let me teach you the chord sequence. We're going to play our right hand improvisations over. We're going to start in, obviously, the key of F. And we go F, 2, 3, 4, A7, 3, 4, D minor 7, B flat, B flat minor, F, E7, G minor 7, C7, a little bit slow there, F, and then the bridge, F, D7, G minor 7, C7. I want to put all that in the... Um, in the uh, subtitles, so don't worry if you didn't pick up on that. If you're not familiar with the chords, check my earlier videos, all chords explained back there. Okay, um, so that's our chord sequence. Give it to you one more time F, A7, D minor 7, B flat, B flat minor. We can go to B flat minor 7, it's academic. F, E7. G minor, G minor 7, C7, F, D7, G minor 7, and back to C, and you loop back to the start. I'm not going to go through all, all the way through George on my mind. If you want to learn the middle section, you know, the chords are online, go and dig them out. Okay? Um, so, what we're going to do is play those chords very simply, just as block chords in the left, and improvise over in the right using that F pentatonic scale, F major pentatonic. Okay, so you might end up with something a bit like this. Okay, or to be a bit more adventurous. As I said, if you're not confident with improvisation, just start with a couple of notes. Okay. And if you're not confident, it's probably a good idea to get that left hand off pat to start with. You'll need to play very simple chords. 
you so you can use the pentatonic in lots of ways. Um, if you're playing a sort of jazzy tune like Georgia, then it can naturally add a jazzy feel. So you find yourself doing things like hitting kind of jazzy sounds like that naturally just by following the chord sequence and the pentatonic in the right. If you're playing kind of rock or rhythm and blues, it also works. The pentatonic's really popular with guitarists because it's really easy to play on a guitar. You can learn the pattern. And... Um, Again, sort of rock guitarists can play what sound like incredibly difficult solos just using pentatonic scales over whatever chord sequence. So really worth getting to know, um, especially if you've already done some work on the blues scale, because the, you know the blues scale and the pentatonic scale are quite closely related. Um, so there we go. Um, if you have any questions, stick them in the comment thread, drop me an email, or, or, or the usual. I'm, I'm, always really really happy to sort of um, respond to questions and answer your questions if you have ideas for videos give me give me a shout I'm always happy to hear about those because I, I want to kind of do what people what, what you know what viewers of these videos want me to do you know with the exception of sort of teaching people how to play tunes by Pat because that's boring I'll teach you improvisation and uh, cool stuff like that okay there we go I hope that was useful I'll see you in the next video